Hey, this is Chris Plush from CGMasters.net, and this is a free chapter from my upcoming course on mastering car creation in Blender. We'll be creating a Corvette Stingray from start to finish, and you can check out more info on that at the link in the description. In this chapter, we'll be modeling the tire for the Corvette, so grab the starting blend file in the description. It contains the blueprints you'll need already loaded in, plus the Corvette's rim to put the tire on. So when you open up the blend file, one thing you'll need to do is go to the editing tab in the user preferences and switch the option to align to view instead of world. This aligns any object we add into the view that we're in, and this is definitely helpful for following along with this tutorial. All right, so without further ado, let's get this chapter rolling. In this chapter, we're going to work on the tires. So let me press the end key for the right side toolbar, and the first thing we'll do is load in a reference image for the treads. So let me press numpad 1 for front view, and then numpad 5 for orthographic view. And let's go down to our background images, and I'll re-enable them. And let me minimize every one. And then I'll click on Add Image, and then click on Open. Let's go to our References folder, and we'll load in, where is it at? Tire Treads. So here's what we'll be tracing to get the shape of the treads going. But I'm going to shrink this down and kind of move it into place the best I can compared to the blueprints in the background. So let me go down to the Size option here. I'll just turn that down really far. And then I'll zoom in. And let me play with the X value. I'll get it to the right side of the tire. Well, actually, you know what? We should do this in side view because I can't tell where the top of the tire is here. So let me press numpad 3 for side view. And where's it at? All right, let's match it up to the back tire first. So let's just play with the X value. Get it right in the middle. Hold shift if you need to for smaller movements. And I'll move it up on the Y axis as well. Let's see if that matches up. So it looks like we need to make it a little bit bigger. Let's go with a size of 0 0.72. 0 0.72 actually looks pretty good. Maybe a touch bigger, 0 0.725. And let's turn the Y value down to 0.3. Is that going to center it? Yep, that looks good. So I'm going with a Y value of 0.3 and a size value of 0.725. It should work exactly the same in your blender as well. So let me press numpad 1 for front view now. And I think it's in a good position right here. I don't want to work on top of the rim over there. So We'll just work over here on the side. Then once we draw the treads and, and get things moving like that, we can move things onto the rim. So let me press N to get rid of the right side toolbar, and I'll left click around the center of the tire right there to place the cursor. Now let's press Shift and A and add in a mesh plane and start tracing things. So let me tab into edit mode. With all the vertices selected, I'll press X and I'll choose Edge Collapse. So we're left with just one vertex. And let me make sure that's the center of the tire. I just want to make sure our shape that we draw is as least skewed as possible. So let's start over here. I'll place the cursor at the corner of the round pocket there. Then I'll press E to extrude it. And then again, I'll extrude it down and then extrude it over to that corner. So two for the corners and then two for the middle of the pocket. I'll just center that. Now let me select both of these vertices. I'll press E to extrude it to the right a little bit like that. And E again. We'll extrude it down here. And I'll press E and extrude it all the way down here. Now let's do something about the curvature right here. Let me select these two vertices. I'll press G and move them down and to the left like that. I could have added extra vertices, but I'm trying to use as few vertices as possible. Since there's so many treads, there's so much detail, we're going to end up with a lot of geometry no matter what we do. So I'm just trying to limit that as much as possible by being very efficient with my use of vertices right here. So let me select these two vertices now. And I'll make them aligned with each other vertically. So I'll press S and then X, hold control and scale it to zero. So they'll form a perfectly straight line going up and down. And now I'll press E to extrude them, and then immediately press S and scale them away from each other to the middle of those treads right there to meet up with those lines. Now it's important that we scale them away from each other proportionally like that, because in the end, when we make one set of treads, we'll be duplicating this on top of each other. And I want to make sure that they're going to align, <clears throat> that they're going to align with each other perfectly. So let me delete those, and I'll select these four vertices now, <clears throat> and I'll press Shift and D, and I'll move it over to this channel. And I'll do it again for the end of that channel, and I'll do that for each of these. Alright, so that's what we got so far. Now it's important to note that the distance between these two vertices is the same as those two, and so on up the line. That's important because if we have a mismatch like that, and I select all the vertices, and I duplicate these treads to 
create copies of them to wrap around the tire. You can see that the, all the other vertices align with each other perfectly, but we have a gap right there. So it's important to really pay attention to how you're aligning your vertices as you're creating this one slice of tread. And that's our plan too. We're going to create one slice of tread right here, and then we're going to use the array modifier to create a duplicate, and then we're going to wrap it around in a circle to actually form the tire. So let me undo the change I made down there. And we're good to go though, because we just du duplicated these vertices all the way across. So we know they all have the same height, basically. So now let's continue drawing the tread shapes. So this tread right here actually gets smaller as it goes down to the point right there. So let me select that. I'll press G and then Z and move it down a little bit. And that's probably in a good spot. And we'll move this down as well. And I'll move that, this one, up a little bit. Now let me select those two vertices and press F. And I'll select those two and press F. All right, let me move this one down on the Z-axis and that one up a little bit. And then I'll take these two vertices, press E, and extrude it up to about the center. And then extrude it all the way up to there. Now I'll take those two, press E, and extrude it up to the top, and then press S to scale it down, then press F. Now let's move them up a little bit. And how are we looking? All right, that's looking pretty good so far. Let me take these four vertices right there, Press Shift and D and duplicate them, and I'll move them over to this pocket here. Then just rotate them and scale them into place. And let me move that vertex down a little bit on the z-axis and this one up. Then I'll select those two vertices and press F, and then those two, press F. How's that looking? That's looking good. Alright, we just got to do this over here, but we can actually just duplicate what we made over here. So let me select all those vertices. I'll press Shift and D and move it over there. Then press R to rotate, and we'll get that in place. Now I can't tell if it's actually smaller over there, or if it's perspective. I don't think it's smaller. No, I think we're good. So let me rotate that into place, like that. And let's get these vertices into place over here. Then I'll select those two and press F, and then those two and press F. Alright, still looking a little strange over here. Let me move those vertices down, and I'll move these up a little bit. Alright, that's looking good. Now let's face up the areas surrounding the shapes. So let me select the top vertex there and the bottom one. It's important that we extrude these down in order to make sure that everything remains aligned with each other later on when we duplicate the treads. So I'll press E and I'll extrude it down to right there to line up with these vertices. I'll extrude it again down to there and then one more time over there. Now let me select those two vertices and press F down the line. And then I'll select those two and do the same thing. Now we need some more vertices over here, so I'll select the top and bottom vertex again, press E and extrude it to the left, and drop it there. Now I can create a face there and a face there. Then I'll select the four end vertices, press E and then Y, or X I should say, and I'll drop it there. Then I'll press S and then X, hold control and scale it to zero so it's nice and flat. And let's flatten out some of these edges as well, like this one. I'll select those two vertices, press G twice and slide it to the right. It's important that you move them both together, because again, for alignment purposes, if one of them was off-center like that, and we duplicate the tread and move it down, you can see it's off-center down there, and they're not going to connect. So let me undo that. And I'll leave those vertices as is, and everything else is good to go. Now let's move down here, and I'll take these two vertices and press F, and those two as well. And right here, we'll do the same thing we did down on the left side. I'll take these two vertices, press E to extrude it for the middle vertices, and then up again, and then up one more time. Now select those two vertices, press F, all the way up to there, and the same thing down here. It gets a little bit weird right there, but we'll fix that later. Actually, let's do it now. Let's select that vertex, press G twice and slide it down, just to separate them a little bit. And I'll take that and move it down a little bit to kind of reestablish that round shape. And it looks a little bit better. So let me select all four of these vertices now. I'll press E and extrude it up and to the right, to the edge of the tread right there. Then I'll press S and then X, hold control and scale it to zero. Now let's move that into place a little bit better. And now let's go on over here and I'll select those two vertices. Press E and extrude them down to right there. And then one more time. And yeah, let's take these two vertices now and press F twice. And those two. And now we'll take these four vertices and do the same thing we did on the other one. We'll just extrude it to the edge of the tread. I'll press S and then X, hold control and scale it to zero, and make sure that's right up against the edge of the tread like that. 
All right, and up here, we actually did that on the other side already. So here's what I'll do. I'll take all these vertices, press Shift and D, move them over here. Then I'll press R and hold Control and just rotate it like that. We're basically just going to replace the vertices we already added in there. So let me press H to hide them. I'll select those vertices, press X and erase them. Then press Alt and H to bring this back. And I'll select these four vertices and press F. And then those four and press F. All right, how are we looking? Now, because this is going to be wrapping around in a circle, I want to make sure that the edges going vertical have all their vertices spaced out. For example, these two here are too close together. If we wrap that around in the circle, the inconsistency in the spacing is just going to create some flat spots or some ridges. So what we'll do is just take those two vertices and press S and scale them up until everything there is, is pretty much spaced out evenly. And we'll do the same thing right here. Let me just move that down and I'll move that up. And there, I'll space them apart, make sure they're centered. And right here on the end, too. All right, so they're spaced out evenly, so they should wrap around pretty nicely around in a circle. Now what we're going to do is face up the inside of these treads, and then we're going to inset the faces to start forming the bevel we see around the rim of the treads. So let me select those two vertices, then I'll press F all the way down to there. Then I'll select these four and press F. And then I'll hold Alt, right-click on that edge loop, then hold Alt and Shift, right-click on that one, then press W and choose Bridge Edge Loops. And I'll do this for each tread down the line. Now, once we're finished with that, what we're going to do is select all the faces on the inside of the treads, and then we'll inset them. So let me switch over to Face Select mode, and I'll just go through and select all the faces in the middle of the treads. Once you have all of them selected, let's zoom in to one of the treads, and then I'll press the I key to inset the faces, and we'll match it up with the bevel we see in the reference photo. Let me just make sure everything looks good down the line. It looks fine. Let's press the T key, and let's make sure that we disable boundary so that it doesn't inset the faces at the top and the bottom. All right. Now let me rotate the view, and I'm going to push these back on the Y axis to actually form the bevel. Now, you can figure out how deep the tire treads are by going to any tire site. It'll tell you the depth of the treads. It's usually in 30 seconds. And these particular tires, I think, were 9 30 seconds, which was about 0 0.008 meters, something along those lines. So that's what we're going to go with. So let me push these in a little bit, and then I'll extrude it in the rest of the way. So I'll press G, and then Y, and I'll hold Shift for small movements, and I'll move that in 0 0.001. Now I'll press E and then Y and extrude it all the way back and I'll hold shift and I'll push that back to 0 0.007. So that'll be a total of 0 0.008. And we have faces on the ends there now. So let me select those and I'll erase them. So let's press X and erase the faces. Now I'll press A to select everything and press Control and N to recalculate the normals. And let me tab out and check it out. It's looking pretty good. Let me tab back in and let me switch back to vertex select mode. And what are we going to do now? Now I want to add a subsurf modifier, but I don't want to add extra container loops everywhere. So I'm going to use a bevel modifier for that. So let me get out of full screen and let's start off with the bevel modifier. And I'll change the limit method to weight. We're going to need to specify which angles or yeah, which edges we want to be beveled. And let me switch over to edge select mode in the header there. And let's see what we're going to do. So let's just go ahead and select all of the edges that we want to be beveled. So I'll hold Alt and Shift, and I'll right-click on all of these edges, including the ones on the bottom and around the top. And let's get these corner ones there as well. Once we have all of those selected, I'll press the N key for the right side toolbar, scroll up to the top, and under edges, edges data, I'll increase the mean bevel weight to 1. And let me increase the bevel segments to 2, and I think I'll decrease the bevel width, so let me zoom in on one of the corners. And let's turn bevel width down to 0 to just start over, then I'll hold shift for small movements, click on it, and drag it to the right a little bit like that. So I think I'll drop that around, let's go with 0 .0004. And let me press T and I'll choose Smooth Shading for everything and see how it looks. 
So I think it might still be a little bit too soft. So I'll go with 0 0.0003. All right, let's just double check everything, make sure it looks good. Make sure we didn't miss any edges. And all right, so far so good. Now let's toss in a subsurf modifier and see how things look. So I'll add in subsurf and I'll crank that up to level two just to preview it. Looks like we got a problem at the corners down there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna select that edge and that one. And let's increase the mean bevel weight of that to one so it bevels there. And that'll actually fix those corners. However, it does give us some tighter geometry there which might lead to some noticeable creases once we actually bend this around. But let's just do that for all the edges first and then we'll figure out what to do. So let me select all the edges around those issues and I'll increase the mean bevel weight to one and that'll fix all those corners. Now let me go into front view. Now let me take a look at the treads here. You can see that they actually look like they might be a little rounded on the inside. In fact, right here we actually see a hint of a hard edge right there before it goes into that channel. So here's what we're gonna do. Let me tab back in and let me full screen this. I'm gonna press Control and R to add a vertical loop cut in between each one of the channels. So I'll left click there and then right click and I'll add a loop cut there as well there and there. Now I'm going to select all of those. I'll rotate the view a little bit and I'll press G and then Y and move it down to kind of form that rounded inner pocket. So you can see we have some hard edges there, but it looks intentional now. No one's going to know that we were just kind of hiding congested geometry. And it actually looks pretty cool, extra little detail like that. All right, so that takes care of that and things are looking pretty good. Now let me zoom out and we'll center this over the rim. So I'll just press G and then X and move it over there. And get that centered with the rim so that an equal amount is sticking out on both sides. And let me press numpad 3 for side view. I'll tab into edit mode and I'll select all the vertices. Then press G and then Y and move it all the way over here to the edge of the treads. Now let me switch back to vertex select mode. And we can get rid of the reference image for now, I think. So let me scroll down to the bottom here and turn off visibility for the tire treads, and I'll minimize that. Let me tab out of edit mode, and what I want to do now is create the general shape of the tire in order to use that as a guide to bend the treads around. So let me select the rim, press Shift and S, and choose Cursor to Selected to place the cursor in the middle of it, and then I'll press Shift and A from front view and add in a mesh circle. Then I'll press T, and let's go with 32 vertices for that. I'll tab into edit mode and press S to scale it down. And let's press G and move that into place down here. Now I'm going to take the widest point here and try and fit it within the rims of the rim, I guess you could say. So I'll press S to scale it up and get that right in the center as best as you can. I'll press G and Z and move it up to right there, right at that platform right there. And all right, that's a good start. Now let me press shift and space to get out of full screen and let me pull over our reference image over here. And then click on open and I'll open up one of the back perspectives maybe. I just need a good clear shot of what these tires look like. So right there from inside the rim you can see it juts out at an angle, sharp angle, and then it goes up while curving in slightly. And then we have a soft curve right there and then it's, it's a real gentle curve at the top. I don't think it's flat. So all right let's do our best to try and match that. Let me slide this over and leave a hint of that visible and let's get started. So first I'll delete the top half here. So I'll select all those vertices, press X and erase them. And let me select these two. I'll press E and then Z and extrude that up a little bit. Then I'll select those two right below it, press G and then Z and move it down right to the edge of the rim there. This is where it's gonna start. This is where it's gonna start fanning outward. So let me select these two vertices and how far away does that go up? Let me press G and Z and move it about that far away from the rim. Then I'll press S and scale it up. We'll see how that looks. And how far away from the rim is that? It's definitely not level with the rim. It's definitely sticking out a little bit. So I think right about there should do. Maybe a little bit more mellow. Now let me select, let me select all these vertices. I'll press S and then Z, squash it down until it's almost flat, but leave a very gentle curve like that. Then press G and Z, move it up onto the red line, which is going to be our ground. And now we just need to add some extra vertices over here and kind of give it a gentle slope and then make it rounder on the corner here. Let me actually delete the left half now. So where's the center? This one right there. 
So I'll select all the vertices to the left of that, press X and erase those vertices. Let's add some vertices over here and start shaping this better. So I'll press Control and R through there. And I'll scroll up until I have, let's go with four cuts and left click. And let me just take these vertices and I'll round off the edge over here. And then I'll straighten out the line right here. In order to make this straighter, let me select those two, press X and I'll dissolve them. We didn't need that many. So let me straighten this out a little bit more. That's just more of a gentle slope upward. So that's looking pretty good, I think. Let me just soften out or soften up the curve down here. In fact, let me take all these vertices, press S and then Z, and scale it down a little bit. I think that was a little bit too curvy. Then I'll press G and Z and move that down over the red line again. All right, let me soften that up more now. And I think that looks good. So let's add in a subsurf modifier now and see how things are. So I'll add in subsurf and I'll crank that up to level two. And now we need to add some extra edge loops in or some extra vertices in, I should say, and sharpen up the details. So let me start up here. I press control and R right in there and left click then press G twice and sharpen up that corner up there. Add another one in and we'll sharpen up this corner and we'll add one on both sides of that. So it's a nice sharp point like in the reference. All right, how's that looking compared to the reference photo? It's kind of hard to tell, but I think we're on the right track. Let me just move that out a little bit more. And I'll soften this up. I think that looks pretty decent. We can always change this later as well. Let me just, the curvature is going a little bit too far up here. I want this to be a little bit flatter, I think. So let me press Control and R through there, left click, and then I'll press G twice and slide it up just a little bit, just to flatten this area out a tiny bit more. All right, I think that looks decent. So let's flip that over to the other side now. Let me select the middle vertex. Actually, let me press A twice to select everything, then hold shift, deselect the middle and reselect it. And we'll change the pivot point to active element. And then we'll mirror this to the other side. So I'll press shift and D, then press S and then press X. Hold control and scale to negative one. Now I can select the middle two vertices, press W and merge them at the center. Or actually I could have just chosen remove doubles. All right, so how's that looking for the tire shape? I think that's pretty good. Now, before we bend the treads around this shape, let's make sure that this actually looks like a good tire. So let me tab in, I'll press A twice to select everything, and then numpad three for side view. Let's spin this around the cursor, which should still be in the middle of the rim. If it's not, you can select the rim, press Shift and S and choose cursor two selected. And with all these vertices selected, I'll press Alt and R to spin it around the cursor. Let me go into shaded view. And I'll, I'll select all the vertices and press Control and N to recalculate the normals. And let me tab out and see what we got. So this looks like it might be sticking out a little bit too far. No, actually it looks pretty accurate compared to the rest of the tire. So I'm going to leave that as is. But this definitely needs to be smoothed out right there on the corner. So let me tab back in and I'll press Control and Z to undo everything. And let's take a look at the top here. And let's try and reshape this. So let me select those three vertices and I'll press X and dissolve them. And I'll just space these out and get more of a mellow curve there like that. Let me bring that down a little bit. I think that's going to end up looking better. By comparison to the left side there, it's definitely a lot smoother. So I think that's going to work out. We're going to need to flip this to the other side when we're actually finished. All right, let's try and spin that. So I'll select all the vertices again. And in side view, I'll press Alt and R, select all the vertices and press Control and N. And let's take a look. All right, that looks better. I'll go with that. So let me press Control and Z to undo everything. And let me select all the vertices on the left side and delete them. Then I'll press A to select everything. And again, we'll deselect the middle one and reselect it so it's the active selection. And our pivot point should still be active element. So then I'll press Shift and D to duplicate then press S and then X. Hold control and scale to negative one. Let's press A twice to select everything. Press W and choose remove doubles. All right, let's spin that around a circle. I just want to see the full thing. So I'll select all the vertices and in side view, I'll press Alt and R. Then press T and change the angle to 360 degrees. And let's increase the number of steps really high. Let me select all the vertices and press control and N. I'll tab out, press T and choose smooth shading. All right, that's a tire. I cannot wait to get those treads spun around that. It's gonna look so sweet. 
me tab back in now and press Control and Z to undo all of that. Now let me tab out of edit mode, and what I'm going to do is increase the subsurf level, because I want to convert this to a curve with really high resolution, but right now you can see it's kind of faceted. So what I'll do is just increase the view levels to 5, and then I'll press Alt and C, and convert this to a curve from mesh. That should maintain a nice high resolution curve there for us. And now we can actually use this for the curve modifier and actually have our tread bend around it. So the first thing I'll do is make sure that our origin point is the same on our tread as it is on the curve. So let me select the curve, press Shift and S and choose Cursor to Selected. Then I'll select the tread, press T, and from the Set Origin menu, choose Origin to 3D Cursor. Now let's center the geometry over the cursor as well. So I'll go to Set Origin and then choose Geometry to Origin. It's important that we have the geometry where the origin is because the origin is what follows this path around the curve. So with our geometry right there, that means the geometry is going to perfectly follow that curve as well. Now let's go over to the modifiers and add in a curve modifier. Then click on the eyedropper and then click on the curve object. And you can see it's trying to follow the path, but it's not quite oriented correctly. So let me click on these until I find the right orientation. So it looks like for me it's negative X. Now we just need to center this on the curve. So to center this, I'm just going to eye it up. So let me press numpad 1 for front view, and I'll full screen this, and let me zoom in. Now I'll press G and then X, and move it whatever direction you need to, to get that centered like that. Now to see if they're actually even, I'll press the B key for a ruler, and it looks like the, the right side's a little bit lower. So I'll move that just a touch higher, I'll press B again and see if they line up, and that's good to go. Now, judging by the reference pictures, the channels get more shallow toward the end there. So let's mellow that out. Let me press forward slash on the numpad to go into local view. I'll tab into edit mode, and I'll press numpad 7 for top view. Let me zoom in. I'll press A to deselect everything, and make sure limit selection of visible is turned off, so we can stay in shaded view. Then I'll press B, left click and drag over those, and these as well. Then I'll press G, and then Z, and move it down. Well, actually, in this case, it's G and then Y. Move it down to about right there. Then I'll press B and middle click and drag over those vertices to deselect them. And let me zoom in down here. I'll press G and then Y. Move that down more. And I'll deselect those but leave the ends selected. And the same thing on the other side. Then I'll press G and Y move them down even more. And let me tab out and let's see how that looks. And that looks awesome. Let me double check to make sure they shouldn't be more shallow. So let me press N, and I'll turn visibility of the tire treads back on. Let me zoom in and see how they look. So it definitely looks like it might be a little bit more shallow on there than on mine. So let me turn that back off. I'll tab back in, and let's make that a little bit more shallow. All right, that looks good. Now let me press forward slash on the numpad to go back to global view, and I'll press numpad 1 for front view. You can see it's a little bit below the ground, and it's not quite lying on the line we drew for it. So let me tab into edit mode for it. I'll press A twice to select everything. Let me get out of full screen. And let me enable this option here to see the modifier in edit mode. That way I know which way to move it. So let me press G and then Z. That's not going anywhere. G and then X? Nope. So it must be G and then Y. Let me press numpad 3 for side view so I can more easily move it on the y-axis. And I'll zoom in, then press G and then Y. I'll move it like that until it's seated on the green line there. And just double check in front view and everything looks good. Cool. Now let me tab out. I'm going to select that and also our curve here. And I'll press forward slash on the numpad to go into local view and just get away from everything else that's kind of obstructing my view. And now we need to create the side walls here. So let me tab back in. What we need to do is take the outer lying edge loops, extrude them, and scale them away from each other so we have more geometry over here. So let me hold Alt and select that. Hold Alt and Shift, and I'll select that. And let me zoom in as much as I can. Then I'll press E to extrude, then press S and then X to scale away from each other. So let me go down here, and let's see where that's extruding up to. All right, so we're almost where we need to be. I'm going to extrude that, or scale it actually, until it meets up with that point there. So let me press S and then X, scale it away from each other until it hits that bend right there. And let me zoom out. I'll press E and then S and then X and scale it again until it gets to the next bend. 
right there. And we'll do that one more time. Press E, S, and then X, and extrude it all the way up like that. All right. We're going to apply the modifier, I think, and then edit this manually, because there's a couple of extra details I want to add in. But I'm just generally getting edge loops where they need to be to just help us with that process later on. Let me press Shift and Space to get out of full screen. And what I want to do is apply the curve modifier. But right now, the curve modifier is actually bending the subsurf geometry, which is why we have such a smooth curve. Let me see what it looks like above the subsurf modifier. So I'll click on the up arrow for that to move it above subsurf. And now it's just bending the base mesh vertices. But you can see because we don't have as many base mesh, base mesh vertices as subsurf geometry, that it's not capturing that curve quite as well. So what we'll do is just add a couple of extra edge loops in there to make sure we retain that curvature when we apply the curve modifier. So let me go up here and I'll press Control and R right through there, left click and then right click, and I'll do it right there as well. And in order to retain the curvature of this, what I'll do is press G and press the up arrow a few times and it just restores the curve there. I'll do the same exact thing to the other side. I'll press Control and R through there and then there and I'll move these down. Now I'm adding it to those areas because those are the ends, those are by the most curved part of this. So let me tab out and let's see how that looks. So now it's capturing the curve much better. Now we can actually safely apply the curve modifier and we retain the roundness there. Now I can go over to the curve modifier and click on apply. And now let's tab in and we have some restructuring to do over here to get that curvature back. So let's start up at the top here. I'll press control and R through there, left click and drag that new edge loop down to that corner to tighten it. I'll add an edge loop here as well, drag it to that corner. And let's start rounding things off here. So I'll press control and R through the middle left click and then right click, then press G and move it right over the line there. We'll add an edge loop there. And let's see, we need to tighten up this edge right there. So let me press control and R through there, left click and drag it up. All right, how's that looking so far? It's looking pretty good. Let me full screen this. And it looks like we might have a bit of a crease right here because of the geometry being more congested there. So what can we do about that? Let me select these two vertices. I'll press G twice, slide down a little bit just to spread things out. And I'll add an extra edge loop through here. Let me press Control and R through there. Left click and then right click. And let me go into front view. I'll press G and I'll move it over to match with the curve there. And that should definitely help. Is that perfect? That looks perfect enough. I can't really see any problems with it. All right, that'll do then. All right, now we're going to create a curved circle to use for an array modifier to make sure we have enough treads to actually spin around the tire. So let me press numpad 3 for side view. And with the tread object selected, I'll press shift and S and choose cursor to select it. Now let me press shift and space to get out of full screen. And I'll press shift and A and add in a curved circle. Let's tab in and then press S to scale it down to be the diameter of the tire. And right now you can see it's pretty low resolution. So let me go over to our curve options over here and I'll increase the top preview to something pretty high like 200. And that looks nice and smooth to me. Now this circle is going to be where the tread surface is wrapping around. So let's make sure that the circle is actually seated on the tread surface. So I'm going to zoom in down here and I'll press S to scale this away or to scale it up and meet that line up with the bottom of the tread just like that. All right, now let's select the tread and we'll go over to the modifiers. Let me slide this over more. And let's, for right now, we'll delete the subsurf modifier. And let's add in an array modifier. Let's turn the X relative offset down to zero and the Z offset to one. So now it's going to duplicate it for us in the right direction. But we need as many as can fit around this curve right there. So what we'll do is change the fit type to fit curve. And click on the eyedropper and then click on the curve. Now we have as many as we need to wrap around there, but as you can see, they're too spaced out. So let me zoom in and let's decrease this offset to 0.4. No, there's still an overlap there. So let me zoom in real close and let's change this to 0.41. That's a little bit too much. 0.4096 and there we go. But you can see they're still separated a teeny tiny bit, but we can merge them together by enabling the merge option right there. And a merge distance of 0.01 might actually be too much sometimes. You might run the risk of joining close vertices like that together. For example, if that was a little bit higher, they would all start merging and you'd end up with a mess. 
So let's change that to 0 0.005 just in case. It's still plenty for what we need for, but it's not going to get us in any trouble. All right, now we need to wrap this around in a circle. Now there's a couple ways of doing this. We're going to go with using the simple deform modifier to just bend this around. So basically we just use this curve to to define the array modifier and get enough treads to actually wrap around that curve. But now we'll use a simple deform modifier to actually bend it in a circle. So now let's go over to the modifiers and we'll add in that simple deform modifier. And let's change the type to bend, but you can see it's bending in the wrong direction. So we're going to add an empty in to use as the axis to bend around. So make sure your cursor is centered in the middle of this circle and I'll press shift and A and add in an empty. Now let's press G and then Z and move that down to the bottom. And I'll zoom in real close and press G and Z and move it right there where the bottom of the curved circle is. This is the point that it's going to start bending around. And since everything is going to the left, we want it to bend around this point here so it wraps perfectly around our tire. So with the tread selected now, click on the eyedropper for the axis origin field and then click on the empty. And you can see it's bending around in, in the correct direction now. So now let's increase the angle to 360 degrees. It wraps it almost all the way around for us. The limit to dragging the value in that field is 360, but we can actually type something higher. So let's type in 368, and that almost does it. Let's go with 368.5. All right, how about 368.65? That should do it. That's close enough. If you want, you can be more precise. Let's go with 368.648, and there we go. Okay, now they actually don't merge together. There are ways to get this to merge together without having to apply all these modifiers. And if you're interested in a technique like that, you can email me and I'll go over it with you. But for this case, this is the easier way to do it. And we need to apply these modifiers anyway in order to UV unwrap this so we can more easily texture the sidewall. All right, let's see how that matches up to our curve circle. So I'll go into side view, select wherever that circle is. There it is. And you can see our treads are a little bit higher than they should be. So what we can do is just move the empty down so it changes the pivot point where it bends. So I'll select the empty, press G, and then Z, move it down until it's inside that circle. And let's zoom in real close. I'll press G and then Z and move it up right into place like that. Now I'll select the circle and it should fit perfectly within the circle all the way around, and it does. All right, cool. Now let me select the tire and I'll press forward slash on the numpad to go into local view or to go back to global view, I mean. And let's check out how it fits on the rim. Looks perfect. Let's swing around the back. So I'm, I think I'll add a couple of extra edge loops back here because as you can see, we don't have much detail. I wanted to save on some faces by not adding edge loops in, but this might actually be visible if we have low views of the car. So let me tab in. I'll press Ctrl and R through there to add a loop cut. Left click and drag it to the top. And I'll add one right here as well. All right, cool. Now at this point, before applying the modifiers, I would advise saving a new blend file just as a backup, you know, just in case you end up wanting to make some changes down the line. And now with the tire selected, I'll apply the bevel modifier, apply array, and apply the simple deform modifier. So this is one full mesh now. And let's take care of that seam that we saw earlier on. There it is right there. So we'll tab in and with all the vertices selected, I'll press W and choose remove doubles. And it should remove 109 vertices. All right, cool. And now let's add in a subsurf modifier for this. I'll keep it on a render level of one and I'll turn off visibility for the subsurf modifier in the viewport so things still are nice and fast. And now while we're at it, you can see that it's overlapping the rim a little bit. So I'll tab in, hold Alt and right click on that edge loop there. Then just simply press G twice and slide it into the rim like that. And it's probably happening in the back as well, right? Now it looks like we're clear on the back. All right, that's going to do it for this free chapter. In the course, we'll also be using a lattice to deform the bottoms of the tires to give them a weighted look. But that's going to do it for this video. So keep an eye out for my upcoming course. It will be out this month and check the links in the description for more info. So until the next video, I'll see you around.